me to the book of, let me find it here, Luke. <laughs> we will be looking at Lucifer this morning. One of the great doctrines of the Bible. Uh, I want to look this morning and kind of give you an introduction of Lucifer, who he was, and all and what, and what he's planning on doing, and his return. Uh, you know, uh, in the beginning of unknown infinity of time, before time was created, before the world or the universe were created, so far as we know, the first revealed act of God was to create the angelic host. Now, when you read that in the Bible, the phrase, the Lord of hosts, it refers to the host of heaven. Now, first, the first revealed act of God was the creation of angels, the angelic host. They were uncountable, multitudes, innumerable. In the book of Revelation, the Greek calls them murades. Uh, upon murades, upon murades, ten thousand times ten thousand, thousands of thousands. That's in Revelation 7, 5, 11. Uh, so, it's a vast, innumerable number that God created. The angelic host of heaven. They were created before the universe, before matter, before and time was created. In the 38th chapter of the book of Job, we are told that the angelic host, the sons of God, the angels of glory, looked upon the marvelous creation of our universe with joy, wonder, amazement, and gladness, 38 7. They watched God in his cre creation of stars, planet, universe, galaxies, and all of those things. Now, in the creation of the angelic host of heaven, God also created the most perfect, the most beautiful, the most glorious of all the angel angelic creatures that he had created. God created Lucifer. He made him the son of the morning. That's in Isaiah 14, 12. Lucifer, the light bearer, to be the leader of the angelic host of heaven and the guardian of the throne of God himself. He made him above all the other creatures in, in creation in God's created heaven and earth. Uh, in the 28th chapter of the book of Ezekiel, he had described, Thou sealest, uh, sealest up the sun, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Thou art the anointed. This is the Hebrew word for Messiah. Thou art the anointed cherubim that covers, that guardeth I set thee so. Thou was upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. He was so brilliantly, beautifully created. Diamonds, rubies, emeralds, all sorts of jewels adored his very walk. Thou was perfect in the ways from the day that thou was created, Ezekiel 28, 15. This Lucifer was so alluring, so beautiful, until he was able to take out of the hands of God one-third of all the multitude of the angelic host. And we read the fall with these two uh, phrases that are used in, one is in the 28th chapter of Ezekiel. Thou was perfect in thy ways from the day that thou was created until. Now, that until is the crisis point of God's universe. Until iniquity was found in thee. 
thy heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. And then there in the 14th chapter of the book of Isaiah describes that fall. Isaiah said, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? His name means light bearer. Son of the morning, how art thou cut down to the ground for thee? Thou hast said in thy heart, and here we find five I wills. I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the angels of God. I will sit upon the mount of, mount of the congregation. I will ascend above the heights of the cloud. I will be like the most high, almighty God himself. That's Isaiah 14, 13 through 14. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the side of the pit. Isaiah 14, 15. Now the beauty, the glory, and the splendor, and the brilliant of Lucifer brought pride into his heart, and he envied God himself. And so alluring, so becoming attractive in this creation. Lucifer then was able, according to the 12th chapter of the book of Revelation, to take a part of him, one third of the angels of glory. Lucifer and all his angelic hosts were created as we are, with a choice. They had, a, had the ability to choose. I will. God never created them as robots. He created them, or did he create us as robots? Nor did God create them with personality. A, a mountain cannot talk back to God. The ocean or the stars or the planets cannot think God's thoughts. God created the angel in coast with personality and with choice. And this Lucifer was able to bring out of the out of heaven one third of the multitude angelic host. Now they followed him, they chose him. Like Absalom chose David. Uh, uh, he stole the heart of Israel. Lucifer stole the heart of one third of the angelic host from God's omnipotent power. And he became and he became known to them as Satan, the adversary. He became known as the accuser, the slanderer. Now in the fall there came to pass in tragedy and turmoil that we see in our universe. They looked upon a perfect work of God. Anything God would do was perfect. Anything he did, it was perfect. It would be beautiful, perfect. The angelic host looked upon cre the creation of God, the earth and the universe and the whole uh, universe is the starry galaxies above and beyond us. The angelic host looked upon the creation of marvel, just an amazement. But the but when Satan failed and brought in sin into the world, the world also failed. In the first chapter of the first verse of Genesis, God created the heavens and the earth. They were perfect in beauty, and the angel angels looked upon upon it with with uh, joy, amazement. Second verse says this, and the earth and the heavens became void and darkness and waste. That was a result of sin that entered into the universe. That was the result of the fall of Satan. And with the, with whatever sin enters into any place, anywhere in creation, it brings chaos, darkness, and void. So the universe failed in the fall of Satan. Now, when God looked upon the fallen creation, the stars that are burning out, uh, 
dead, blackness, the whole creation of God. When the Lord looked upon the waste and the void, he chose one planet, Earth, to regenerate, rejuvenate, to remake or reconstruct, and God did that in six days. He created this fallen Earth, and he made it as beautiful and perfect. He called it the Garden of Eden. And in that garden, he sent man that he had created. Finding him lonely, he made him a helpmate and brought her to him. Now, they were to have dominion over the earth. It was his, his Adam's. It belonged to him. God said to Adam, have dominion over him. And when he brought Eve, he said, Replenish the earth. It was yours. The title deed is in your name. The earth belongs to you. Now, on the outside of the garden, there was a sinister, evil, subtle serpent of Satan. He sat there, he walked there, he lied there in his vindiction. This is his creation. The whole creation has been given in his hand. And when he heard God say, the earth is yours, the title of the deed is yours, Satan is bitter in jealousy. He watches. He waits something. Adam loved, he recognized Adam loved Eve. Satan said in his heart, if I can get the woman, I can get the man, which is true everlasting. I can get the woman, I can get the man. So, he came before the woman in the incarnation of the most beautiful, beautiful of all the animal creation. The serpent. You see him as a slimy, moving on his belly. He is cursed. But in the beginning, he was beautiful, subtle, could talk. And he said to the woman, Eve, you will be as a God himself if you eat this forbidden tree. Doesn't that sound very familiar? Satan always says that. Satan, in his heart, I want to be as God. She listened to the voice of the serpent and she failed and Adam failed. And therein, the title deed was wrestled from the authority in the hands of Adam and seized by Satan himself. He now has the title deed of earth. It belongs to him. He took it in the fall and sin and deception of Eve and of Adam. Now, in the temptation of the fourth chapter of the book of Luke, Satan says to the Lord, he said, the glory of, if you will fall down and worship me, the glory of the kingdom of the world I will give to you, and and you will, if you will fall down and worship me, because it has been delivered unto me. It had been delivered unto me. That's what Satan said. It was given to Satan in John 12, 31, 14, 30, and 16, 11. Our Lord said that Satan is the ruler of this world. And the second Corinthian letter, uh, the fourth chapter, Paul calls him the God of this world. The title deed of this earth is passed from the hands of Adam to Satan when he fell in the garden of Eden. Now, and after, and thereafter, the story of Satan is the story of the Bible. He, he listens to God when he, when he said the Lord, the seed of the woman shall crush his head, and the seed, seed, the seed of the woman shall crush his head, and the seed of the woman. Now, all through the millennial sin, Satan has been trying to destroy the seed of the woman. He did it. He thought that he had triumphed when Cain slew Abel. He thought he had done. Uh, done it 
in the world when the world fell into sin and the flood. Noah. But Noah found grace in God's sight. He thought he had done it in the days uh, of adultery with, when the world, the whole earth was filled with adultery. But God chose Abraham, blessing thee, I will bless the world. And he thought he had done it in the barrenness of Sarah. But he gives Sarah a child when she is 90 years old. Uh, he thought he'd done it to, in the great apostate, but God called the people back under Elijah. He thought he destroyed the seed, seed when uh, the daughter of Ahab and Jezebel destroyed all the seeds of David. But Jehoshaphat, the head priest, stole the little Joash away. And the baby kept and kept him in the temple hidden for seven years. He thought he had done it with the Assyrian captivity, but he did. The Babylonian captivity. He thought he had done it in Bethlehem when all the babies were slain. But God preserved the seed of the woman, and they fled to Egypt. He thought he had done it in the temptation, but the man of God was able to withstand the wooing and the illusion of Satan himself. He thought he had done it when the people of Nazareth took Jesus and wanted to cast him headlong down the mountain. He thought he had done it when the Pharisees took up stones to destroy Jesus, destroying him to death. And finally, he, he thought he had done it at a place called Calvary. They nailed the seed of the woman to the cross, and Satan watched him die. And with joy and with incredible triumph and gladness, Satan was ex uh, exalted, was over the death of the Son of God. Israel had, had slain her own son. But there was a secret hidden in the heart of, of the Almighty, uh, the, the death of Christ. His blood and suffering and out of the resurrection of the glorious triumph of, of the Son. A secret, a secret God had hid in the plan of the age of grace. The prophets never saw it. The Old Testament never wrote about it. Satan never dreamed of it. That's out of the blood and suffering of the cross, the death and the tears. Our Lord was to be, uh, be in the gospel of grace, the Son of God, and wash our sins away. And, uh, and made him members of the redeemed family of the Lord. The age of grace. There is the story. And the dragon was wroth with, was made war with the seed who was, who kept the commandments of the Lord. Now, in the in the 20th chapter of the book of Revelation, Luther is thrown out of, he uh, uh, is out of heaven down to the earth. Great tribulation, the end of the battle of Armageddon, the end of the battle of, uh, is just the beginning. The angels come down and set a seal upon Satan in the bottomless pit. After a thousand years, he is loose for just a season. I don't know how long that season is. And then he raised the in the final opposition, confrontation to Almighty God. This time he cast he is cast into the lake of fog forever and ever. Now when God created him, he gave him the name Light Bearer, the son of the morning, Lucifer, one of the most astonishing of all of histories or Christians give. They, if you look at, if you were seeing a picture of Satan, you would see he has a horn, forked tail, a uh, pitchfork, he has a red suit, he is smoking the uh, coals on the fire, and that is the farthest from him. 
He is one of the most beautiful of all creatures. And uh, the first one, and then nobody is in hell yet. You know, you people, oh, they'll go to hell. No. And not go, but there ain't nobody in hell yet. The first one is the beast. The second one is the false prophet. The third one, there is Satan. The fourth, there is, to, is all those that follow him. Now, to think of Satan as being in hell and uh, stoking the fires of damnation of all, th all things alien to the word of God. This, you don't have no Bible for that stuff. In no way is Satan uh, ridiculed or as a, as a figure that he showed. He is Lucifer, the son of the morning. Paul described him as the angel of light. Now look, this man, this creation, this Lucifer in the person is present and dares to defy God in his omnipotent power. And not only that, but his ambition was not to become God, but be like God. He is brilliant. He shines. And the angels, you see, that is, uh, is, is throughout the outworking of Satan's doing. Our experiences uh, with him in this world, the angel of light. He is a, a favor of excellent conquest and provisions that he gives. To, uh, and also, is the, he is the patron of all the arts, culture. Did you know that uh, uh, all the great universities uh, that we have today was all established? Christianity to train preachers. You've got uh, you've got Harvard, Yale, Princeton, Brown University. All those schools, all those famous schools, were built for Christians to bring the message of God to people, to a lost people. Satan wants you to. There is no. Hypocrisy, unthinkable, indefensible in human imagination as that of evolution. You think of it, nothing, something out of nothing. We don't do that. You have to have something to get something. How in the world do you get nothing out of nothing? You don't get it. Uh, Sort of like the, down in Australia, they've got a, uh, a coral reef. It's a thousand miles long. And they say it, it, it took 50 million or billion years for it to create. You can go down to the bottom of it, you see that little coral, coral. You can go to the top of it, you can see the same thing. Identical. And they got these amber, amber, that is the resin. The rods that come from three fifty or sixty thousand years ago. That they said that's when it was created. And if you get a get a piece of it, uh, and it uh, has a bug in it or a mosquito, oh, I've got something. Look at her. And you look at that mosquito, and he's the same as he was today. Same old thing. Now, all religion. He loves religion. He is the most religious of God's creation. He wants to be like God. The whole story of the ancient world is told in terms of gods of the Babylonians, Egyptian, and Greek, and Romans. Did you know that there's over 350 some million separate gods or worship in India today? Anybody that would take urine from a cow and throw it on their head, something's got to be wrong with them. And that's what they do. 
just leave the true God out. Uh, and, and, and the love of religion in the world. The, he loves the millions and millions and millions who worship at the shrine of Buddha. And he loves the gods of the Hindus and he loves to worship the worship of the Muslim, millions and millions and millions, just so you leave the true God out of it. That's brilliant. That's Lucifer. That's the angel of light. He has no ability to create anything, therefore he's counterfeit. He counterfeits the church of the living God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Paul said in, in, uh, in Timothy, uh, the counterfeit, he said, Talk about the church. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. He loves religious without a redeemer. He just loves certain preachers. They'll get up and they'll hoop and holler and, and go on and everything. And then you hear the people say, Man, 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 did you hear that? Do you hear what he said? I listened to every word he said. He didn't say a thing about Jesus Christ. That's what I asked a pianist that knew how to play the piano. He was tuning this. And he was a player and I knew he knew how to play because he was playing. And I said, how do you feel when somebody comes up and goes, whoa, 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 whoa. And you say, or somebody say, oh man, he can really play. He said, I don't say nothing. <laughs> because you go whoa, whoa, whoa don't mean you can play. There's a difference between playing and strumming it. A lot of people strum, strum a guitar, don't they, but? But mighty few people play it. Chad Atkins can play one. <laughs> There's a few like was like him that can play it. And the same thing. That's Satan. He is brilliant as he is, the angel of light as he is, Lucifer that he is, the light uh, bearer, hides away carefully everything, everything. He hides away and it's a result you can see him come out. Look, look at the great universities, like I said. There's Yale, Princeton, all them. Even Vanderbilt was Vanderbilt to Commodore. All of those places were built for the present that the gospel would be preached. They were built to train ministers. They ain't trained nothing. They ain't. He would hide away and uh, and you would never know it. He never you would never know that he seen the great institutions of learning. That's mine, he says. That uh, they leave God, as long as they leave God out of it. That's the reason our school system said they've left God out. Everything. Leave God out of it. Do what you want to do, but leave God out of it. That's our government. Leave God out of it. Don't put God in there. No words. You can't say, you can't put up the Ten Commandments. In other words, they just take them all down. Leave God out of it. And yet, up there in the Supreme Court and places, certain places, they got it rolled up there. Why do they have a prayer every day, every morning in the Congress? Tradition. That's the only thing I said, because they say a prayer, and I don't think that prayer ever gets through the walls. I knew a little joke about that. He said, said, I got up in the attic of the church and said, I could not get around for the prayers all up there. <laughs> they never even got through the roof. <laughs> and so that's the way it is a lot of times. But then, look at this, and I'll quit. One of the greatest things, one of the most amazing revelations to me in the Bible is this. Who is it? Or who is it who introduces the end of time? The Archangel Micah. Micah, the everlasting, eternal enemy of Lucifer. It's Micah, the Archangel. 
There is one archangel, one, and his name is Micah. His name is like, and who is like God. Satan is, I want to be like God. But Micah is, who is like God. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with the voice of the archangel. There's only one. And the trump of God. And so the dead will rise. When the dead raise, raise up, those that are his, Satan's going to be like, hey, this is mine. I put them in the ground for corruption. What are, you, what are you doing raising them up like that for? Because God come to claim his own. You know, the Bible says in Revelation 12, said, there was war in heaven. Micah, who is like God, and the angels fought against him. I will be like God. And the dragon and the angels fought, and the great dragon was cast out. Now, here is as he ascended in the book of Job 1 and 2 he is accusing of the saints he is accuser and the slanderer uh, uh, the cast out of heaven then he cries then you hear the cry who's going to be able to stand with Satan is cast out of heaven who on earth is going to say God has sealed us? God has sealed uh, sealed his own. In Revelation 17, uh, he's sealed. In the seventh chapter of the book, book, he is sealed. God sealed his own. And also in Revelation 7, 23, 2 and 3, God seals his own. The Holy Spirit sin, seals us in the day of redemption until the full purchase price, the soul and body sealed. First uh, Ephesians 1, 13, 4. The devil can, he cannot destroy us. He cannot circumvent us. And the devil cannot overcome us. We belong to God. And they overcome him with the blood of the Lamb and uh, the, uh, the word of their testimony. They love not their lives unto death. God has sealed us. As children of God, God has sealed us. You know, uh, I believe it was uh, Martin Luther in 1520-something. He uh, wrote a song. His best friend had been burnt at the stake because he wouldn't recant his testimony. And he wrote the song, The Mighty fortress of our God. Uh, you will see that in all sorts of great cantatas or whatever you want to call them. Uh, but he, he done that. Now, we as children of God, how can we lose? Our enemy is brilliant, the angel of light, but he that is with us is greater than he's with me. Or but he that is with us is greater than he that is with them. Our triumph is certain. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We are sure we have been sealed by God. Let's stand.